What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 22nd of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs here on my watch list. And as you guys can see, and I'm sure a lot of you guys already know this already, the markets today were absolutely bloody, 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 bloody day we're going to be talking about my perspective on this market what i think is going to happen and of course we're going to be taking a look at some individual stocks here to see where they could be potentially going next week but before we do talk about this for everybody out there that finds value in these videos you enjoy the breakdowns me talking about these different stocks and the market updates here on youtube feel free to go down below and hit that like button it really does support me and supports the channel's growth in general and i want to say thank you to you guys in yesterday's video i actually challenged you to get that video to 75 likes and as of right now i think that video is at 90 likes which is absolutely absolutely crazy so thank you to everybody out there that watched yesterday's video and hit that like button and for everybody out there that's new to the channel i have two links down below uh, in the description box for you to join 100 free discord group chat and 100 free facebook group again those two are linked down below very helpful communities down there for everybody out there that's a beginner intermediate whatever you guys are in terms of trading and investing you'll find value in those two communities Community. So let's talk about what ended up happening today in the stock market, guys. And it, like I said, absolutely insane day today. I was not expecting this whatsoever, but the SPX, the S&P 500, ended up closing the day down 55 points, down about 1.9% at the close. The Dow Jones Industrial Average today, guys, down 460 points, down 1.77% at the close here. And the NASDAQ Composite, guys, got absolutely pummeled today, down 170 points, down about 2.25% nearly 2.3% on or really at the close of the market today. So let's just take a look at the SPX, talk about some technical um, you know, points here, resistances, supports, and where I personally see this index going on, you know, based on some different conditions here. So we all know, you know, we've been expecting a pullback in the markets here over the past couple of trading days, slash, I guess you can say at this point, week or two trading weeks, because we notice here over the past couple of weeks and for everybody out there that's been watching the channel you know this I talk about this all the time you know we've been pushing up higher highs higher lows all of 2019 and notice how every time we've pushed to a high in the SPX we plateaued for a day or two and then we noticed a significant dump right a significant correction a significant sell-off this previous one which was back in I believe was it February or something we'll see here in a minute yeah it was actually more towards the beginning of March we saw a three percent correction and then we saw from the bottoming out point here it was a higher low meaning the uptrend was continuing we ended up running all the way up to about 2860 which was yesterday yesterday we saw that nice little pump up to 2860 we had a green day yesterday i believe it was around a 1.3 1.4 in the spx very solid day and that this could have been, or, you know, honestly, this could be the point in time where we reach that peak and now we're seeing that retracement in the SPX. So we can see from the top here, you know, this was a 2% pullback nearly from where we peaked off yesterday to where we ended up closing today. So honestly, you know, this pattern is looking pretty healthy. You know, we're pushing up higher highs, and then we're seeing those corrections, seeing about a 1, 2, 3, 4% correction every couple of weeks here. So in terms of the uptrend pattern, everything is still intact, but I want to show you guys some key technical points here where if we break these points, we could be headed towards 
lower uh, you know lower uh, dollar value here in the SPX we could be seeing some more red days to come so we actually broke a very critical support level today at about 2820 in the SPX we broke above that a couple of days ago we trended above it nicely we pushed up to 2860 it was looking like we were trading in this horizontal pattern between the 2820 um, you know old resistance which was a new support and the next resistance which is at about 28 70 and we can see that massive sell-off we saw today brought us below that support making it a new resistance again and now we're trading on top of the next support which is roughly at about 2790 to 2800 dollars we can see here take a look the spx closed right at 2800 dollars and this is one of the uh you know very um interesting things really the key things that you guys need to be keeping an eye on for this upcoming week is whether or not we're going to end up breaking this level. If we break this level, especially the 50 SMA support and the 2790 to $2,800 support, there's two different supports there. You know, this is going to be a very, very um, key, really critical break in the SPX in terms of technicals here. And we could be selling off even stronger from there, which is why, honestly, I didn't take any positions quite yet, um, you know, in my swing trade. Trading, uh, slash day trading portfolio for next week. I didn't take any uh, re-entry positions in the stocks that I was talking about yesterday due to this possibility. And I honestly, I just want to see where we end up opening on Monday in terms of the futures before taking a position in two of those stocks that I was talking about, NVIDIA and Activision Blizzard. And for those of you guys that watched yesterday's video, you know that. But, um, you know, honestly, even if we do break this level, you know, we're still going to be tech technically speaking here on an uptrend because until we break this level right 2720 which was the previous lower high, which constituted the continuation of the uptrend. Until we break that level, you know, we're, we re, we really can't say we're moving down further on a uh, you know on a technical basis because still technically, even if we make a low here, that's still a lower high or a higher low rather from the previous, which means the uptrend is still intact. So if that makes any sense, let me know in the comment section. I sh I'm sure all you guys know what I'm saying here. So until until we break this level, you know, I think that the uptrend is still intact on the SPX. And honestly, there is some potential for us to get to this level if we do break the $2,800 level, $2,790 support this upcoming week. So that is what I'm going to be watching in terms of the SPX here. And let's just hop and see, you know, on the five day, five minute, the break of that support. You can see it even clearer, right? The $2,820 support. We ended up plowing through it today today right and this was the support from the previous couple of days and if we take a look at the 20 day one hour chart you know we're still technically trading above the 180 SMA and holding it as a support right now so that's another level to keep an eye on if we break this level and then we break the longer term chart support levels you know this is going to be a very good sign that we're going to possibly sell off more so that's what i'm looking at in terms of the spx completely bloody day out there today guys completely bloody day you know i wasn't really expecting this much of a red day today but you know we have been pushing up so a red day was going to come and it ended up coming today guys so let's just take a look at the dow jones industrial average we said it was down about 460 points today down about 1.77 percent and we briefly were trading above this resistance, which was a new support a couple of days ago at about 25,800. We were holding that level, looking to push up, break out of the $26,000 level and potentially get to the $26,200 level, which was the next resistance. But obviously with what happened today, the bloody market, we ended up breaking that support. Now it's acting as a new resistance with the next support being at around $26,000. $25,400 for the Dow Jones. And on a technical basis here, guys, we're noticing, you know, this is looking like kind of a double top. Although it didn't top at the same exact spot, 
you know, this is looking a little bit bearish in my personal opinion. It's like a hybrid pattern between a double top and the beginning of a head and shoulders, if that makes any sense, right? We can see the left shoulder, the head, and then the right shoulder, and it also kind of looks like a double top at the same time. So this is looking pretty bearish, in my opinion, in terms of this pattern on the Dow Jones. Honestly, if we were to break the $25,400 level, I wouldn't be too surprised if we went to the $25,000 level and we did something like that as illustrated by that little trend line that I did draw for you guys. And this obviously all depends on what the overall markets do. Let's say we end up selling off next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which is a possibility. You know, this could very well come into fruition. We can see this exact pattern that I drew for you guys. This can definitely very well happen if we do end up selling off next week. So just take a look. You know, it does seem a bit bearish right now. Just something to keep an eye on here in terms of the Dow Jones. So let's hop over here now to the NASDAQ composite, the one that got hit the absolute hardest today, down nearly 2.3%, 2.2 at the close, and it's still falling here after market hours. Again, these are the futures. We can see, you know, this one was, I guess you can say, the most overextended out of every single index the th out of the three major ones that we talk about here on this channel. We can see the crazy run it's been on since the 8th of March, really from $6,900 up all the way up to about nearly $7,500. This index has been on an absolute tear, breaking resistance after resistance after resistance, hopping above higher levels, higher levels, it seems like every single week, right? So this pullback that we got here in the NASDAQ, the fact that it's the biggest pullback out of the three major indices doesn't really surprise me at all, right? Because again, we were overextended, we were, you know, pushing up, for day after day after day with minimal pullbacks here over the past couple of weeks. So this pullback really was due for the NASDAQ. So now let's just take a look at some levels that I'm going to be watching here over the next couple of trading days, really heading into next week. So we can see we broke the resistance at $7,400 a couple of days ago. Then we broke the next resistance at about $7,500 yesterday. And now we failed to hold that as a new support. And we broke that, making it a new resistance again. We broke the next level of support, making it a resistance again. And now we're testing the $7,375 level as a support here, as well as the 50 simple moving average as a support as well. So if we were to sell off next week, you know, these are levels I'm going to be waiting to see if we break beneath of, right? If we break this level, which it seems like we already are doing here after market hours, again, these are the futures, and we break the 50 SMA, the next spot I'm going to be waiting to see us potentially go in the NASDAQ is going to be at around $7,300 flat here, right? This is the $7,300 old resistance, which is now going to be the next support level. And from there, if we sell off even further, you know, $7,200 is going to be the next price target in terms of the NASDAQ. But again, you know, this... You know, the fact that we sold off so heavily today, you know, this could potentially bounce back on Monday. Who knows, right, guys? But we could also sell off even further, especially if the futures are pointing red on Monday and large caps are continuing their sell off. You know, this could very well sell off even harder, um, you know, this upcoming week. And I'm very honestly, very, very excited to see what does end up happening. So that is pretty much the wrap up of today's market update. All you really need to know is it was a very big red day. This was the sell off that we've been waiting for over the past two, three weeks of trading because of the stock market has just been pushing up and up and up. Well, at least the SPX and the NASDAQ were. The Dow was struggling a bit with Boeing, but you know, overall, the markets just have been bulling over and over over these past couple of weeks, and this was the very much needed 
pullback. So next week, are we going to sell off even more? Are we going to break some more supports here? Are we going to continue to have red days? That is what I'm going to be waiting for, and I'm very eager to see this upcoming week. So let's talk about very quickly here, guys, what I ended up trading today, and I'm sure a bunch of you guys can already guess it. Yes, it was TVIX, my favorite go-to ETF whenever the markets are red and aggressively selling off. Because when they are aggressively selling off, we've seen this in the month of October to December, this ETF goes absolutely bananas, haywire, it goes crazy. And let me just point this ETF to you guys that, you, that don't know what it is. And it goes up in price whenever, again, the markets sell off specifically the SPX, the S&P 500, that is what it tracks. We can see today, you know, the big sell-off that we saw of about nearly 2%, this ETF went up 21, I think 22% at its highest today, which is absolutely unreal. 20% move in one day in TVIX, and I was able to capture a pretty fat chunk of, of this due to the massive, massive, uh, really, I should say, the quick sell-off that we saw in the SPX. Because if we're selling off, you know, on a slower pace throughout the day, you know, typically TVIX, you know, it'll, it'll go up like 5% in a day very very slowly to the upside right but when the spx is selling off aggressively i mean like one two percent in the matter of an hour two hours three hours that is when you see the massive spike the quick spike in tvix which is what we ended up seeing today and we can see it went from 26 dollars all the way up to $31.31 or $0.34 cents rather at its peak. And if we can just see, you know, in the matter of, let's say, three hours, three hours and 20 minutes, this, uh, this ETF was up 16% from where it ended up opening up, which is absolutely unbelievable. So the fact that we did run up very quickly, I ended up getting more profit than I typically get on my day trades. Typically, I'm taking anywhere between one to 2% on my day trades. And in this uh, specific day trade here, I ended up taking 3.6% again due to the massive, quick, spiked volatility move that we saw, you know, in uh, the SPX, which in turn push this up like a rocket, right? We can see, you know, once we ended up breaking this level here at 2680, which was a pre-market resistance, and we saw the aggressive sell-off this morning in the SPX, I just all automatically knew that today was going to be a very aggressive sell-off day. Just take a look at this, guys. Within 20 minutes of the market open, look how quickly we were moving down. We were down about 10 points at this point within 15 minutes. Then literally 10 minutes later, we were down another 10, 15 points. Like This sell-off was quick. It was very quick, which opened up that margin on TVIX. So I pretty much just built my position here at about $27 and I believe 10 cents I ended up getting in. Ended up honestly holding through this pullback and I held it for a little bit longer than I typically do because the SPX was confirming to me that we were going to continue to sell off on the one day, one minute. And how did I know that? Because we were getting rejected by the 50 SMA and we kept making lower lows. We kept pushing down and we really Really just kept getting rejected and we failed reversing out of this downwards pattern right here you know this could have been a point where I was like okay we might be reversing to the upside but once I noticed to see or once I started to see rather you know red candlestick starting to form to the downside here we were struggling to break them you know we were struggling to break out of this resistance on the next push up you know that was telling me we're making lower highs lower lows were continuing to push down, which is why I just held on to TVIX. And we can see back on TVIX, I made about 3.5, 3.6% here. You know, I got in at about, about 27.10. Up to this point, was up. I was up about 4.2%. Again, I held through the pullback. I should have honestly sold up here, but I got a little too excited, held through, you know, held through the pullback. And then as the downwards push was confirming itself, I ended up just locking in the profits on this next little pump 
at about 3.5%. And I honestly could have held it more. Obviously, I would have made 15% on my money, but I didn't want to get too, too greedy here, guys. A lot of you guys are probably saying, oh my God, you just, you should have just held on. You should have just held on. I would have made, you know, you would have made another 15%. But again, you know, I'm typically aiming for one to 2%. And the fact that I nearly doubled that with 3.5% and I was already getting a little excited here and I uh, kind of missed out on a higher profit. I just wanted to lock it in at 3.5%. And that's exactly what I ended up doing. And honestly, TVIX is a crazy mover that I'm honestly going to be watching every time, every single day that it seems like we're going to sell off. You know, this is my go-to ETF when it seems like we're going to sell off. And when we do sell off, when we have the confirmation, when we have aggressive sell-offs, you know, this, oh my God, this is an absolute money maker right here for me, TVIX. So let's quickly talk about some other stocks and ETFs that did poorly today. I'm not going to talk too deep into a couple that I'm planning on trading next week because I'm going to be talking more deep into those um, you know, on Sunday's video. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for Sunday's video if you're not already subscribed. And on Sunday, I typically talk about 10 to 15 stocks that I'm looking to trade. And I also have some stocks on that um video on Sunday that you end up calling out either in the comment section or in the call out section in our discord chat. So while we're at it, drop a comment now down below on this video on any stocks you want me to cover in Sunday's video. And if you're part of that discord chat, let me know in the call out section what you want me to talk about. And I will gladly, gladly talk about it in the next video. So, you know, a couple that did very poorly today, let's just talk about the ones that I actually sold off, uh, sold out of yesterday. And this is the perfect, perfect example of locking in your profits and how important it really is sometimes when, um, you know, you see a stock's a little bit over oversold or overbought rather, you know, you're already up in the position and you're, you know, you're asking yourself, you're kind of in a dilemma with yourself. Should I lock in my profits now? Should I hold it through the next day, hoping it goes up more? You know, that's what I was kind of in a dilemma with yesterday, right? And I locked in the profits on ATVI and NVIDIA. Both of those moves I got five to six percent on, and I was up five, six percent, and I figured, okay, we're already at resistances. We hit my target, so might as well take the profits and wait for a re-entry and this is a perfect example of locking in profits at a good good time right we can see at v here you know my goal was to lock it in here we had that big move yesterday of about five percent lock that in and to re-enter down here i did not re-enter today like i mentioned earlier on in this video i want to wait on monday see what ends up happening there but now that we sold off here you know monday we should be right around here and i'll make my decision then on whether or not i want to re-enter at this level right around here right because this was an old resistance it was a new support we ended up running up we sold sold off, making this an ideal entry point, you know, if the markets, just depending on what the markets do, right? So that is one example here of locking in profits. And honestly, ATV is one that I'm watching next week. So I'm going to be talking deeper into this one on Sunday's video. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight here. And NVIDIA, another one that I ended up locking in yesterday, where is that? I know it's here somewhere here. NVDA, you know, it ended up running very, very quickly. It was a little bit overbought, really. It was really really overbought. It got to about 185 and I entered in at 173 guys. So I was already up or 174 rather. I was already up about five, six percent. We were overbought. We hit near my target here. So I thought it was wise. I figured it was wise since I was already up five, six percent. Lock in those profits. Don't get too greedy. Don't wish and hope that it runs up even more so you can make more money, so I can make more money. Wait for a pullback for a better re-entry. And that's exactly what we got today. The stock was down 3.5%, down nearly $7. And now I'll be able to re-enter maybe at 174 again if we get down here, maybe at 175 or if we maintain this level, you know, 178 would be a pretty solid uh, re-entry price next week depending on, you know, what the futures are looking like, what the markets are looking like. There's a bunch of different things that I, uh, you know, take into consideration before taking a 
uh, swing position. So, you know, if I were to keep these positions, guys, just to, you know, an example, again, I would have not been able to make the money that I did make. Just think about it. I was up 5 6% yesterday. If I were not to lock in up here when I did, I believe at about 183, I would be down on that position 3.5% today, let's say, which means my gains would be around 2% total, 2.5. So I would have made half the money I would have made if I didn't lock in yesterday at the ideal point. So that's just an example, um, you know, that you guys can really use to your benefit in your trading, in your own trading experience. And don't just do this based off of my opinion, guys. You have to, you know, practice the stuff, you know, practice exit entries, exit points, entry points, stuff like that. That is how you master these different things, right? And this is just how I've learned it over the years, just mastering and practicing and experiencing many, many, many different trades and positions, guys, because trust me, I've taken thousands upon thousands of trades here, um, you know, in the stock market as long as I've been in the stock market, right? So, those are just two examples there at V and NVIDIA. And let's just take a look very quickly, rapid fire, some of the big name stocks today. Starting off with Apple, you know, Apple's been on an absolute tear recently, and we saw the big pullback today of about $4, 2%. So this is a very due pullback in my opinion. We got rejected by 195 the resistance. This could open up a nice entry point as a swing trade. Let's say if we sold off closer to this support at about 188 190 I think that could be a very nice entry. We saw Facebook today ended up selling off $1.7 here, 1% flat. Not too crazy of a move here in terms of Facebook. Facebook. Amazon ended up, ended up dumping pretty big today, $54 down 3%. Netflix down 16 points today, down nearly 5% on the day. Pretty big move there. Netflix, Google down about 2%. Microsoft down about 2.6%, which is really um, a pullback that I've been waiting for, guys, because we all know Microsoft has been hitting all time highs. And a couple of other ones that we can see here, you know, Cron. Down 7% today. It's looking like we're getting a big, big retracement in this marijuana stock. You know, CGC is down about 4% today. Tesla's down about 4% today, 3.5%. Walmart down about 0.79%. Square's down about 4.3%. These are just a couple of stocks that I track here, guys. Johnson & Johnson down nearly 1%. You know, let's see... Uh, Cat, let's see what Cat did today. Down 3% today. You know, these stocks have gotten absolutely pummeled today. And crazy, crazy, crazy to think that this happened after we thought, wow, the Fed, you know, no interest rates. We had a nice green day yesterday. A lot of us thought that this was going to continue. But the market smacks you in the face sometimes. And this is one of those smacks, guys. So another one, let's just take a look very quickly. ACB today, we got that big pullback of 5%. And this is what I'm going to be talking about in Sunday's video. This could open up an entry point if we do maintain this $9 level here. But let's say we break this level, which I kind of want to happen here because I want to get an even better entry. And we head to about 820 wow that's going to be a much better entry in my opinion so i hope you guys enjoyed this video here if you did feel free to drop a like leave a comment and subscribe make sure to stay tuned to sunday's video i'm talking about a couple of stocks and etfs that i'm trading and i'm going to be talking about a couple that you shout out on this comment section of this video or on the discord group chat in the call out section so feel free to leave your comment with the stock or in the discord leave a comment there with the stock and i will gladly gladly get to it so i hope you guys again enjoyed the video i really do appreciate you all for watching have a great weekend i hope you all killed it this week i'll see you all on sunday